Welcome to the Discretionary Mutual Fund podcast series, an opportunity to dive deeper into the information already shared about setting up a DMF to replace traditional insurance for the apple and pear industry. My name is Rochelle Zealy, and I'm joined today by Justin Niven, Managing Director of KJ Risk Group and DMF Specialist. As I'm sure you're well aware, insurance is a high cost of doing business. The Discretionary Mutual Fund, or DMF, is an opportunity for industry to take control of the combined insured investment and profit from this major risk purpose. Today, Justin will talk about a DMF specifically, including the structure of a mutual and the board composition. Justin, can you please explain what a DMF is and why might it work for the apple and pear industry? Thank you, Rochelle. A discretionary mutual fund, or DMF, is a financial vehicle for the management of risk. It's important to point out that it's not insurance. It's actually a company limited by guarantee that you, the growers, will technically own. Each of you, at, with your growing entities, will become members of the mutual, and as those members, you collectively own and control your own risk. You need scale. If we don't have enough scale, the mutual won't get off the ground. Our initial data collection has shown us that on an aggregated basis, you certainly do have that scale. And a critical part of the feasibility study is that we get more of you to share your data with us so that we can actually, hopefully achieve our $20 million collection uh, and achieve the scale we need to launch. Um, but DMFs are also highly tax effective. So if you're a New South Wales grower, for example, you will be paying fire service levies and stamp duties on your property placement. Under a mutual structure, those taxes do not apply. Every state of Australia um, where we have growers will save money on taxes, um, stamp duty being the primary place there. Um, as noted before, we collected data in the feasibility study process, and that data was very positive. There was a little over $4 million in premium collected from 44 growers. The claims average was something in the order of 1.2 to $1.3 million. So on an annual basis, there are millions of dollars in profits that are flowing to insurers. The primary point of a mutual is to try to capture a component of that underwriting profit and keep it for you, the members. So that's what we're trying to achieve in a nutshell. It will also benefit the industry in other ways. The risks that you face in some ways are problematic. For those of you with cold storage facilities made of EPS, you will have already seen increase in costs year on year, uh, some to the point where you can't actually purchase cover for all of your assets because it's not economically viable. And this is leading to under insurance, but in some cases, no insurance. Uh, this is clearly not an outcome which industry needs. So the mutual should be able to provide you with a better price and a better cover so that we can be fully insured uh, and covered for the key risks that we need to be covered for. There are also insurances that you would like to purchase that you can't at the moment in the market. Uh, and so the mutual is an opportunity for us to create products for you designed for your needs. So to summarize, the mutual will give you number one, control of your own risk. You will technically own this company. It, you will control your own risk and you will share it. Two, you'll get the benefits from buying together, which ideally will be a lower price and a better cover. It will drive risk management. That's the key third point. Mutuals are a fantastic vehicle to drive and improve risk management because you as members are sharing each other's risk. We will want to focus on that. And four, it is also an excellent solution for hard to place risks, i.e. the EPS risks, because we're taking you out of the insurance market. Right, so obviously the DMF involves sharing risk as an industry. Will just any business be allowed to participate? Another good question. We will need to have appropriate guidelines for admitting new members. Um, those guidelines will need to involve an analysis of their operations. And there may be some growers that don't meet our minimum requirements. We don't want to give growers a no though. Whilst it will be a no initially, we want to provide them with a pathway. So ideally we will be able to say, if you do these five initiatives and improve your business in these ways, you will then be able to be a member of the mutual down the line. Ultimately, if we can cover the entire industry, that will be a great outcome. Uh, we need to ensure that the risks that we admit, uh, we do so in a strategic, uh, a wise way with a full assessment of the underlying risks of that operation. In terms of the board that would govern a DMF, what, who would you be looking for when we're looking at board members to actually represent the group and what would their key role be? 
So as I mentioned before, um, a mutual is technically owned by its members. So you, the growing entities, would own the mutual. It also needs to be run by members. So if we had a board of eight, there would need to be at least five members from active growing businesses or cold storage businesses. So in order to be representative of the membership group, the best way to go about it is to ensure that the different types of businesses are represented on the board. So small, medium, large, um, perhaps a cold storage facility provider if they're not actually a grower. Uh, so that way we have a represent, representation from the different businesses on the board. That really helps us when we're talking at board level about risk management and trying to develop risk management processes and protocols uh, because we actually have somebody with operational experience that sits across the whole membership group. And obviously we want the decisions that the board makes to be in the best interests of all. So having a broad spread of representation, both in, in terms of the types of businesses, but also geographic representation is really important. The remainder of the board uh, would be made up of myself. Uh, the mutual would be operating under my financial services license, so I would need to sit on the board. Um, and we would find other independent directors with varying skill sets to add to the board and complement it. Um, APAL should be represented, uh, and perhaps AB Phillips, our broken partner. But those are questions further down the line. I think the most important takeaway from that question, Rochelle, is that the board needs to have majority representation from the membership group and that that should be a real representative group um, you know, from Appleton Pear Growers. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your time today, Justin, and for sharing your knowledge on the DMF. Uh, I'd like to highlight too that this is an APAL initiative, but it will be owned by industry. So if you would like more information about the opportunity, please get in touch with someone in the APAL team or click the link associated with this podcast.